saying this is so stupid? I'm Bonnie. Hi YouTube. I'm hoping you can catch Linus in a roll. Yeah. So we're on the floor. Here's your fish. Yeah, Bunny. I wanted to talk to you about being a vegan while breastfeeding and following the low FODMAP diet. As you know, if you watched earlier videos, Linus had been perpetually fussy from four or six weeks until the beginning of March. How old were you? I guess like nine or ten weeks. I don't think he had like colic because he wouldn't just be crying, crying, crying for like hours on end. Very fussy, definitely very gassy. Could not get the gas out of his body himself. He would need a lot of help pumping the legs. Scream bloody murder multiple times a day because of his gas. Everything I researched had no scientific evidence. The gas drops. There's actually a study done where the placebo works better. I don't even know how placebo works on a baby. That's how little bit the gas drops work. People will try cutting out spicy food, caffeine, that vegetable group that I don't know how to pronounce. Kale, broccoli, cauliflower. You know what I eat? You just want fussy? I'm just telling them how you're not fussy anymore. Anyway, all these different things that people suggest help cut out their kids' colic. Either there's been no studies done or the studies show that it's not effective. He do not want to eat. He do not want fussy. I'm telling them you're not fussy and you're fussy. Yeah. People who went on the low FODMAP diet, which is normally what people on IBS go on, granted they're small studies, they had good results. So I decided to give it a try. Here's the disclaimers. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a medical doctor. I just love research and have good reading comprehension skills. Also, with regards to my veganism, I've been vegetarian since I was four. I found out what meat was and I refused to eat it. Vegan for about 13 years. My vegan is not that OD vegan. If a cereal is fortified with a vitamin that's derived from an animal like I don't know about that I also do eat local honey from the farmer's market when I was first vegan I didn't at this point in the game believe it's more important that we have people trying to keep bees alive if they collapse our entire food system collapses so support your local bee farmers <laughs> Or write hate comments because you're a vegan who believes the rights of individual bees as How did this get here? It's just honeyberry. This is stealing more important than the entire ecosystem. FODMAPS stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyps? I don't know. I'm not a nutritionist, like I said, but what it translates to is short chains of carbohydrates. Now, unfortunately, that's not the same thing as white carbohydrates. That would be way too easy. Google a lot or download an app to find out what you can and cannot eat on a low FODMAP diet. For me, it was real harsh. I realized I was eating at least seven upwards of 21 servings of FODMAPs a day. All of my favorite fruits, I ate an apple almost every day. Pears occasionally, mangoes occasionally, grapefruits a couple of times a week, bananas and smoothies every day. The only fruit that I do eat regularly that does not have high FODMAPs in it is an orange. Legumes besides peanuts, Canned chickpeas, you can eat a small amount because FODMAPs are water soluble. FODMAPs leach into the water. And same thing with canned lentils, which are hard to find. Garlic and onion, I was eating every day. That was off limits. Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, <coughs> asparagus. These are all foods that I ate, you know, not every day, but regularly. Soy milk in the U.S. comes from whole soybeans and you can't eat that. In other countries where it just is made from the soy protein, it's okay. Honey, fructose, agave, molasses, all off limits. Maple syrup's okay and actually white sugar's okay. Also uh, wheat, not strictly like wheat as in gluten-free. Like you can eat soy sauce that has trace amounts of wheat in it, but you can't eat a piece of bread. I 
I was left with certain kinds of soy. Oh. We're not looking at just like the food as a whole. We're looking at what the oh. carbohydrate structure is. Adamami's okay because they're immature soybeans. <coughs> Tofu's okay as long as it's not silken. Bless you, bless you. Peanut butter, peanuts, sunflower seeds. These were my main sources of protein. It's just tofu, peanut butter. I actually gained some weight. I've also been using hemp protein powder canned chickpeas in small amounts. Greenish bananas are okay as long as they're firm and still traces of green. So I freeze bananas now when they're green. Most berries, not blackberries. Pineapple's okay, so I've done pineapple kale smoothies. All kinds of leafy greens are okay and romaine and iceberg in addition to your kale, arugula, collards, mustards. Broccoli's okay as long as you're eating the whole bit of it. If you're just eating the heads, it's gonna be high FODMAP. Tomatoes, white potatoes, sweet potatoes in small amounts, zucchini, green beans, bell peppers, carrots. Don't eat your fur. I'm taking it off of you. Don't don't eat it. These are the vegetables I'm left with essentially. Okay. Almond milk's fine, spelt's fine, buckwheat's fine, all kinds of rice is okay, rice cakes, corn flakes, rice krispies, corn chips, corn tortillas. Uh, yeah, you like it? Uh. I was perpetually hungry. Please, I want some more. I've been perpetually hungry since Linus has been born. I eat way more <laughs> breastfeeding than I did when I was pregnant. I don't have the same kind of snacks with slow energy release. My favorite snacks used to be apples and grapefruits, which both became off limits. Yeah, the off limits can make you fussy. You cry, you cry. With the low FODMAP diet, you're supposed to always look at portion sizes. But because I'm a breastfeeding mom who also has limited protein options, the only times I really paid attention to serving size was fruits. You're only supposed to eat one serving of fruit at a time. So I would wait, you know, three or four hours between. Also things that it specifically said you could only have a small quantity of. An eighth of a hot avocado, quarter cup of canned chickpeas, a half a cup of sweet potato. Everything else I just couldn't worry about that because I would just literally not get enough to eat. If any of you have breastfed, you know you're like an empty, ravenous pit of hunger. Feed me, Tom, feed me now! You cannot eat out. Everyone uses garlic and onion and things except Eric Verdic, Eravudic, Eravidic. I don't know how to say it. One of those restaurants, Devious Kitchen, nearby me, but even they only had like two things on the menu that didn't have some other kind of ingredient in it. The first few days were rough, but I adjusted to it. Luckily, my favorite meal, buckwheat pancakes, scrambled tofu, and fried potatoes, I could still eat. So instead of eating that like once a week, like I used to, I've been eating that like three times a week, which is partly why I've probably gained weight. I'm eating more white potatoes. I'm eating Rice Krispies and corn flakes instead of fruits. I'm eating a lot of peanut butter, peanuts, sunflower seeds. I'm gonna worry about weight loss after Linus is weaned. After two days on the diet, like a different child. He only started getting fussy at night or occasionally before a nap. Once in a while with gas, but not like four times a day like it used to be. Barely screams bloody murder now. He started sleeping like six hour stretches, which he had never done before. His record at this point is 10, which he would not do before. If you have IBS, you're supposed to then like test the different food groups and see which ones are actually irritating you. So much harder to do when you're not the one with the symptoms from it, right? I tested garlic and onion first, and he seemed to do fine with that food group. And then I tested some of the fruit food groups, anything with sorbitol in it. He was like freaking out again, it seems. You know, he's a baby. There might just be something else going on that day. So I had to do it. He got fussy, and I had to keep eating that way for a couple days to see if he was going to stay fussy. It was kind of sad because he did. So then I cut that out, and beans he seemed to have like a mixed reaction to. James suggested maybe it doesn't have anything to do with one specific 
group of these. Maybe he's just sensitive if I have too much of any of them. So since then, I've been limiting how many I eat. So I have nothing off limits now. I can't eat a grapefruit, an apple, a yellow banana with brown spots, and blackberries like all in the same day. Well, I could probably do that if I wasn't eating anything else, but I've been having like bits of garlic and onion, a couple spoonfuls of beans here and there. So because of that, you know, I wouldn't go ahead and eat four fruits. His limit does seem to be about four or five servings. When I ate more than that, he did have a really fussy day. I'm not sure if it was related to the FODMAPs or something else that was going on in his life. His life sucks. His digestion, you know, is getting better and better every day. He's still developing and growing. So, ah. yeah. I did eat a lot again yesterday. We're going to see how he does today. I ate probably about like six or seven servings yesterday. Colic normally resolves itself for three to four months. I theorize that a baby's digestive tract is probably just more developed by three or four months. So he's three and a half months now. Maybe he's all right now. I don't know. I started eating like things that are in the medium FODMAP category. There's not a lot of stuff in that category. It's celery, lentils, sourdough bread, and sun-dried tomatoes. Did I say hazelnuts? My suggestion, if you have a fussy baby, a colicky baby, would be to try a low FODMAP diet. If you're vegan, the protein options might cause you to gain weight. Yeah. I don't know how this video is going to turn out with, like, my head cut off. You know, I wanted a baby in it. Are you going to do a roll for the camera? He's only done belly to back once, but back to belly, he's been doing it multiple times a day for the past few days. If all the things you're used to eating are off limits, then it becomes really challenging at first. But I would say that the hungriest I got was still better than having a baby that won't stop crying or fussing every time he's awake. Maybe she just needs to be rocked. Mm. Okay. Ugh. Oh my gosh, her eyes could not be more open. Bye, YouTube. We love you. Yeah. Say bye. <coughs>